Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about our two current tropical disturbances in the Atlantic. Everybody on the East Coast and Gulf Coast needs to be on high alert because obviously with two disturbances means the percent chance of one hitting the United States uh, is a little bit more significant than if there was only one disturbance. Now, before I get started with this video though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content and also make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. That's also where you can find our Discord server and Facebook groups as well. For today's comment of the day, do you think that either of these systems will develop or maybe both? Let me know in the comments down below and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. First things first, we're taking a look at our two-day graphical tropical weather outlook here for our what we'll call disturbance number one, which is the one that's closest to the United States right now. And it's going to go into the Southern Caribbean. It is a 20% chance of development within the next two days, uh, which is relatively low. Both of these disturbances have relatively low development chances, but those could go up uh, or they could dissipate. That's why I say be on high alert. This isn't an imminent threat, but it is just a, a chance. Uh, and we're going to want to watch it closely, especially with how uh, our most recent hurricane has impacted the United States. Now, here's our two-day graphical tropical weather outlook for what we will call disturbance number two, which is the one just offshore of Africa, and it has a 0% chance of development within the next two days, indicating that it only has a chance after that two-day period. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to move on, and we're going to take a look at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlooks for both of these systems. All right, now here we are taking a look at disturbance number one, the five-day outlook, and as you can see, it only goes up by 10%, and we get a 30% chance of development within the next five days for disturbance number one. It's going to go into the Southern Caribbean. It's kind of taking that same track that we saw with Marco. Uh, usually this track is not as favorable as if it was to go north of Puerto Rico, north of Dominican Republic, and stuff like that. So really, uh, the chance of this one developing in the future is going to be much lower than disturbance number two, if you ask me. Speaking of disturbance number two, let's go ahead and take a look at the five-day outlook for disturbance number two, and we have a 40% chance of development. All storms start out with this lower chance of development. That's what we've seen all season long, and it's going to eventually either just go away or rise up completely. This is a 50-50 chance. These storms I'm going to talk about in a minute don't have the most favorable conditions in the world. Then we're going to start talking about the overall season a little bit, and then we're going to start taking a look at what the models are showing as far as new tropical disturbances coming up and potential tropical cyclones. All of these have a potential chance to become a tropical cyclone. We'll just have to wait and see. What we're going to do is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at the shear and the dry air, take a look at how these could impact these two potential tropical cyclones. All right, now here we are taking a look at the shear. And we can only see tropical disturbance number one here. It's on the very bottom right-hand corner of your screen there. That's disturbance number one. It's in a red area right now, but it's going to move into a green area, which means more favorable conditions. And then another red area lies in between it and the next green area. So it's going to go back and forth between favorable and unfavorable conditions. Uh, and really, th again, the chances of this one developing are relatively low, if you ask me, just because the sheer... Uh, and there is some dry air as well. Speaking of dry air, let's move on and take a look at that. Disturbance number one is kind of at the bottom middle of your screen there. You can see some whiter clouds there. Disturbance number two is just to the south of all those very red and pink areas, areas there on the very, very right side of your screen. Uh, both of them are going to have to go through a lot of dry air here in order to develop, which is kind of leading me to believe that the chance of both of these develop developing is below 50% chance moving forward. Uh, the National Hurricane Center agrees on that for sure. I just really don't see with the dry air, and also we're moving into a sinking air motion. Uh, I don't know how favorable it is for either of these storms to develop, but the trend here this year has been that these storms will surprise us. Uh, so I'm really just going to stay patient with that. Uh, I'm going to continue to track them until they either dissipate or develop further. So it's going to really, you know, I can't really control what happens. And right now it's, again, a toss-up. So we're just going to have to wait and see. There is more disturbances behind these ones. I just don't know how favorable these conditions in the Atlantic will become. I think we've seen most of our Atlantic hurricane season so far because August and, and July were so active. So unless we see late September or October become very active, I think we're going to see uh, a little bit more of a quiet season compared to August, which is to be expected with such an above-average month. Uh, but that's just my gut feeling as of right now. 
What we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at that sinking and rising air motion, see what the rest of September or at least the first half of September looks like. Then we're going to take a look at our uh, 700 millibar geopotential height cyclonic vorticity according to the GFS for the entire model run. Take a look at some future systems we might have to take a look at. All right, now first things first, here is our rising and sinking air motion. This is for August 29th, which is today. As you can see there for the Western Atlantic, so the Gulf, Caribbean, we do have a little bit of a sinking air motion, those reds, and that really just hinders tropical development. It's, uh, you know, it makes storms that come in there have a little bit of a tougher time, but for the Eastern Atlantic uh, and a lot of the North Atlantic as a whole, I guess, and offshore of the East Coast, we have those greens indicating a rising air motion, which makes it easier for those tropical systems to develop. So... The Gulf, the Caribbean, a little less favorable right now, but those main development regions are looking a little bit more favorable as far as rising and sinking air motion because there is tons of dry air out there. There's tons of things leading me to believe that this first half of September is going to kind of be a slower portion at least. The second half of September is a little far out, so we're going to have to wait and see, but my gut feeling is it might be a lot of the same. And then October is a bit of a question mark, of course, with how far out that is. Let's move towards September 7th, so about a week from now, and you can see that sinking air motion kind of spreads throughout a lot of the Atlantic, so we're going to see even more hindrance of that tropical activity. Uh, the Gulf, the Caribbean still deep in the reds, indicating less tropical activity, especially with early development. We might not see uh, a lot of storms start out in that region, but storms could move into that region and still you know, maintain their intensity. It's just going to have a hard time developing further. And then by September 14th, it's just a lot of the same. This is the end of the model run, and we still just see those reds throughout the Atlantic. So again, that first half of September is looking a little bit more quiet in the tropical department, if you ask me. So these two disturbances we have coming up might be our last good chances for tropical development within, uh, for, for the you know foreseeable future coming up, uh, which would be quite interesting to see you know a very quiet period. It would allow for me to make other videos of other topics, obviously, so that'd be good news for sure. Now what we're going to do is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look at the GFS cyclonic vorticity. Just take a look at some systems it has coming up. We're even going to take a look at one frame from the Canadian model as well. Then we're going to close out the video. All right, now here we are taking a look at that first frame. This is going to be for September 5th. Uh, and we have no development on the GFS model before this point, but we do have a little bit starting out there kind of on the very right-hand side of your screen. We have some just offshore of Africa, but also... Uh, to the west of that, we have a little bit more. That's kind of our second disturbance. It does nothing with that first disturbance. The second disturbance tries to develop a little bit, maybe to the point where it could be a named storm and then uh, eventually dissipates. By September 9th, though, it has three new tropical disturbances, which kind of goes against what I was saying. Uh, but the GFS is just like, hey, you know what? I think <laughs> three new disturbances out of nowhere. Uh, and this would be pretty much three... Uh, pretty strong disturbances, possibly even cyclones, all at once. I would say potentially two of these, at least, the, the, the far left and the far right one, look like potential named storms. I'm noticing this actually looks like a face. You can kind of see a mouth there. Uh, and then three, well, three eyes, it looks like, or maybe a nose. Very interesting. Kind of looks like Sid uh, from Ice Age. Very interesting there. Uh, for the eastern United States, I wanted to mention we had our September forecast yesterday, and then we had a upcoming cooldown video before that. Look at the uh, trough there in the eastern United States on this frame for September 9th. It looks very cold, and I looked at the GFS model this morning, very, very cold temperatures entering the central and eastern United States for the foreseeable future into September. Could get fall-like temperatures for most of the eastern United States uh, to start out the first two weeks of September. It didn't look that cold for the first two weeks of September as of yesterday, but all of a sudden the models have flipped around and said, you know what, strong troughs for the eastern United States to begin things out in September. We're going to get to a very cold, cold or at least cooler start, it appears, for those first two weeks of September. That's an epic trough there for the Ohio Valley and the Great Lakes. That would bring some cooler than normal conditions, possibly uh, 15 to 20 degrees below average with a trough that's strong. So very, very interesting to see that. And then the GFS, by the time we're at September 14th, has a hurricane in the middle of the Atlantic. Don't know how accurate that is, uh, but I just thought that was quite interesting. This is the last frame of the model run. Let's take a look at the Canadian model, and this is only for September 2nd. It actually has both of our current disturb disturbances developing. You can see the one there in the Southern Caribbean. Very, very small but potent cyclonic vorticity, and then a little bit of a weaker, more broad one there in the middle of the main development region. It has both of these development developing, so that's on the table right now. It's important to show that, even though the Canadian model isn't good. 
that there is some models that are on board with these ones developing. And that's why I'm calling for potential upcoming tropical cyclones question mark because it is a big question at this point, even for me. And again, if you're on the East Coast or the Gulf Coast, just be on high alert. These systems are not to be uh, ignored. We're going to just want to watch these moving forward. It's not an imminent threat. It's not, you know, we don't know if this will bring any impacts to the United States, but just be on high alert. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, how do you want the September to go? And DJ, D James 21 said, I want it to be cooler than what it was last September. Looking forward to winter. And if you're in the eastern United States, I'm sure you're happy to see those last few frames that I showed uh, with the strong trough coming in. Could start September out cooler than normal. Who knows what the later half of September will bring. But the models are trending at a very cold September overall for the central and eastern United States, which would be very interesting and very abnormal for what we've seen the past, I would say, four Septembers. I mean, this is the complete opposite of the rest. Lately, September has been an extension of summer, like I mentioned yesterday, uh, so this one would be breaking that trend for sure. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Diamond patrons, Mad Birds and Mark J, alongside our Platinum patron, Donna Carnes. If you would like to support the channel, you can check out our Patreon link in the description down below or the pinned comment down below and join our Patreon for exciting content, and also you will be on this end screen at the end of each video. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. Also, be sure to stay tuned for the National Hurricane Center for any life-saving information. Uh, I would seek official guidance from them for sure. I will see you guys in the next video.